Next, we would like to invite Ms. Ko Shetland to present her research on evidence-based vocabulary instruction for early school age children. Ms. Ho graduated from the National University of Singapore with a Master of Science degree in Speech and Language Pathology. She's currently a senior speech and language therapist at Dyslexia Association of Singapore. Her work involves providing speech, language, and communication assessments as well as intervention services to children with specific learning difficulties. Ms. Shetland. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is not my slide. Yeah. Uh, the topic I'm presenting today, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, uh, it's evidence-based uh, vocab instruction for early school age children. So for the purpose of this uh, presentation, um, early school age children refer to children who are age seven to nine, and they study in primary one, two, and three. So what is vocabulary? So vocabulary is the knowledge of words and word meanings ranging from the literal meaning of a word, as in the knife is sharp, to the figurative meaning of the same word sharp, as in Mr. Tan is sharp. Uh, vocabulary also expands and deepens over time from birth to the age of 16 years old. Evidence-based practice, as defined by the American Speech Language Hearing Association, to mean that there is empirical evidence to document the effectiveness of a particular treatment or an assessment. Okay, as early as in the 1970s, studies had shown that vocabulary plays a very important role in language learning and teaching. In 1972, Wilkins said that without grammar, very little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. In 2013, Michael found that students with insufficient vocabulary cannot understand others or express their own ideas. Um, Kodak and Sinclair did a study in 2001. They found that vocab is one of the best predictors of academic success. Vocabulary is also very important for effective communication. Two weeks ago, Ms. Ku, a lecturer at the Singapore University of Social Sciences, said that having a wider vocabulary allows us to express ourselves more clearly and precisely. Okay, so what's on the manual? As in, what kind of evidence-based practice vocab instruction do I have for you today? So first, I'm going to talk about the type of vocab words to teach. Next, the type of learning environment that promotes vocab learning. Uh, third, the frequency of learning that aid word retention. Fourth, uh, learning tool for children to acquire vocabulary. Uh, fifth, a teaching approach that helps to deepen the student's understanding of the words they learn. And last but not the least, an easy to use strategy to enhance students' performance when they learn vocab. Okay, so vocab instruction one. Choose vocab words that children will find useful in many contexts. This means uh, words which are aligned to textbook and subject topics discussed in school. So, for example, you teach the meaning of life cycle when science is taught in primary three. Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, words that are often used at home and in different social settings, such as at the playground, in a church, or during family gatherings. And words that appear in song lyrics like this. Okay, so the song will go on and on. Okay, so vocab um, instruction two. So Grace206 did a study. He found that 
active engagement promotes word learning. And Style and Happiness 2001 said that active engagement should go beyond definitional knowledge. So now we're going to watch a video on how a teacher actively engages her student to learn vocab during shared reading time. Encouraging his students to join in with a repetitive chunk of text. If an interesting, unusual, or a difficult word appears on a page, read the page and then focus on that word. Talk about what it means and other words that may mean the same. Here's a good suggestion. Put the word on a chart called a wow words chart. Baboon said, shoo you. But eagle said, no you should. Eagle stayed in the nest in the tree. Baboon went slap, slap, slap. So Eagle went snap, snap, snap. Off came feathers, off came hair. Whirling, twirling everywhere. Oh, that's more wow well words. I love these words, whirling and twirling. What do I say? Whirling and twirling. Can you show me? Can you show me with your hands? Whirling around and twirling around. Okay, stop that now. What makes something twirl? Mm -hmm. What might make something what might make the leaves twirl? Wind could make the leaves twirl. Yeah. Yes, that's twirling and whirling, isn't it? Okay, they're wonderful words. I'm gonna put on our wow words chart as well. Here it goes. Twirling. Love that word. Can you Okay, so uh, when adults engage children in conversation about a book during reading time, they define and explain new words in meaningful context, like what we have watched um, in the video. This helps children to learn new words and concepts, as well as to relate them to their prior knowledge and experience, knowing how the words function in different contexts. Okay, active engagement also happens when adults engage the children in conversations in a natural and incidental situation during lesson time, play time, as well as uh, watching television program time. During these conversations, the children will hear the adults using new words repeatedly. So the more oral language experiences the children have, the more word meanings they learn. Okay, vocab instruction three. Frequent exposure to targeted vocabulary words is essential for word retention because repeated exposures help children to refine their mental representations by adding correct details and eliminating incorrect details. A great did a study in 2003 the results show that struggling learners may need to hear a new word twice as many times as their peers who are typical learners before they can comprehend the word. They may also need twice as many opportunities to practice producing the word before using it. Okay, vocab instruction 4. Provide a student-friendly definition using everyday language that differs from a dictionary definition. For example, the target vocab word is suggestion. According to dictionary.com, the definition of suggestion is the act of suggesting, which may not be self-explanatory to the children. So, a student-friendly definition would be what you tell someone that you think they should do, but in a nice way. Okay. Vocab instruction five. Use a contextual approach to teach vocabulary. This means that use a semantic map like this to increase the depth of word meaning. So a semantic map provides the key descriptive cues which are known as clue words to the meaning of word. It is also 
a, an effective visual strategy to enhance vocab development. So an example would be, the passage is, Pam was going to work on the bus. She worked as a journalist for a newspaper. She wrote stories about things that had happened. So the target vocab word is journalist. The clue words are, which um, you get it from the passage, Pam, newspaper, stories, and wrote. So in this context, the definition of journalist will be Pam who wrote stories in a newspaper. Nash and Snowing did a study in 2006. The study showed that the contextual approach provided a greater vocab gain as well as improved reading comprehension in children with poor existing vocab knowledge because um, they were more acceptable to the information that's presented and uh, the word meaning is also presented in a more accessible format. If you want to know more about how to use the semantic map to expand vocabulary, you can refer to this web page. Vocab instruction six, allow children to define vocab words using words that truly make sense to them. So for example, the target vocab word is suggestion. So the child may define suggestion as telling someone nicely what he should do instead of saying um, it is the act of suggesting. So Kane 2007 said that children made the greatest gain when they explain the target words using their own definition. So for children with um, language disorder, the same set of vocab instruction can be used because a language impact child may have deficit in communication. So choosing vocabulary words with a functional impact will allow the child to understand what he has here when someone says the word and to have easy access to words that he can use during a conversation. A language impact child could also have poor auditory memory. Therefore, creating a vocab bridge oral and written language environment with targeted, repeated uh, exposure to targeted vocab words will aid word retention. A language impact child could also have problems storing and remembering the content of word meaning. So, provide a student-friendly definition, use a semantic map, as well as allow the child to define the meaning of words using words that truly make sense to him, will help him to understand and retain what he has learned. In addition, provide Verbal support such as modeling, fill in the blank, expanding, and recasting, as well as visual support like pictures, photos, pictorial mnemonic strategies, and visual organizer when providing vocab intervention to children with language disorder. Adults can also vary the level of sky folding according to the child's need to allow the child to succeed. So at DAS, the speech and language therapist, um, when we provide vocab intervention, we adopt an individual-centered focus approach. So this means that we will break down the skills needed to learn vocabulary into baby steps. Then we identify and remediate the breakdown and build up the skills. We also personalize the content taught to the student. So for example, a 12 year old said that um, his understanding is paternal grandfather is actually not a family member. So this breakdown is actually at a, low, at a level lower than below his chronological age, but he is still taught the concept of a paternal grandfather with the use of family tree 
as a visual support to help him to understand the concept. Okay. Um, we also teach the student to say the target vocab word as accurately as the student can uh, so as to strengthen the sound code associated to the word while listening to the word meaning. Okay. Students are taught meta-linguistic skills needed in vocab acquisition. So meta-linguistic skills refers to the ability to think flexibly about what the appropriate meaning may be. So you can see from the example given, like the fish is ready to eat. So who is eating the fish? So um, now let's listen to um, what Dr. Leto says about teaching vocabulary. So she is an expert in speech language therapy provision for school aged children and also an associate professor from the Curtin University, Singapore, uh, sorry, Australia. Thinking about how you teach vocabulary, I talk a lot about this. So um, when children learn words, they learn what words mean, and they learn the sound code associated with words. So when a, a, a fantastic teacher is going to take the children on an excursion, they'll often do a pre-learning, a pre-excursion activity where they'll brainstorm all the words that the kids know and they'll draw pictures. <coughs> While you're teaching them about those words and the meaning, listen to the children, make sure they're saying those words correctly. Consider not correcting them in a punitive fashion, but helping the children to say all those words as accurately as they can. What you're doing then is strengthening that sound code that's associated with the word that's linked to the meaning. So this is all about building those foundations that will strengthen them ready for the, the cracking, the code, the mapping across to sounds and letters. It sounds... Okay, um, so should there be a takeaway message for my presentation? It would be... One, choose vocab words with a functional impact that the child will find useful in many contexts, such as at home, in school, and at different social settings. Um, two, create a vocab-rich oral language environment, which means uh, discussion and conversations. Also create a vocab-rich written language environment during independent or shared reading time. Third, uh, provide repeated exposure to target vocab words to aid retention. Uh, fourth, provide a student-friendly definition and a semantic map to get a better and deeper understanding of the target vocab words. And fifth, not the last, um, yeah, allow the student to define the meaning of a word using words that truly <laughs> make sense to them. So I would like to thank um, my team members, uh, Elizabeth, Erka and Sharon, for their support to make this presentation happen. And most importantly, thank you for your listening. Thank you, Mr. Shetan. With term three around the corner, now I have new ideas to incorporate in my lesson plan and practice in my classroom. So thank you for that. We'd like to invite Ms. Gaikson once again to present a token of appreciation 